So we are back again this time, back down here in the third war district of Houston. And we're here with a pretty unique business that focuses on the selling candles. So I'm not going to take over the show and talk about their beautiful candles. I'm going to have them introduce who they are and what they have to offer. So without f um, further ado. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Malik Moss. I am the co-owner of Lones Scents. And I'm Danielle Moss. I'm the other owner of Lones Scents. Um, we have a candle company that's 100% hand poured and handmade in here in Houston, Texas. Prior to COVID, we were also hosting candle making classes and doing a lot of markets. A black owned candle a company. What gave you the inspiration to go make a candle out of all uh, things? So... We were founded out of an happy accident, we like to say. Um, so I have allergies, and Danil is a candle lover. And we were just looking for a candle that could help clear my sinuses. So that kind of that led us to deciding that we wanted to make a soy wax candle one day. Um, the votive was blank, and it just looked empty. So we were like, maybe we should write something. Uh, we wrote something just facetious. So I. Yeah, with the Sharpie. Yeah, yeah, very rough draft, very raw. And the first quote we ever wrote was, crack was introduced to the black community by the American government. And we posted it on our socials, and our socials just lit up. All of our friends were like, yo, where did you get this candle? And we were like, man, we just made it. So that motivated us to pursue it as an actual business. Um, Danielle is a painter. She's a creative. And, you know, I have interest in music and other um, creative ventures as well. So we just thought this would be a good space to express ourselves artistically. So, so in terms of getting all the raw materials to actually make the candles, was that a, a difficult task that you had to overcome in terms of, like, where do I get this sourcing from? And who do you turn to, especially being black in the candle making a field? There aren't uh, many of us. So how did you figure out where to begin that eventually led you to making more candles? So when we initially started, I felt like we spent a lot of time working on candles on a one-to-one -one basis. And then we learned it's better for us if we buy in bulk. So we found places where we could purchase in bulk. I would say that finding the perfect votive, finding the right wax and things like that, that took a lot of trial and error. And we also had to consider, you know, pricing and shipping, having everything shipped. We work with a lot of heavy items. So it's kind of, you know, this weird game that we play. You know, if we order this much, then the shipping is worth it. So we always have to, you know, meet a certain weight criteria, I guess. Um, as t in terms of being a black business, in terms of finding a vendor, we are anonymous behind that email order, so they might not know <laughs> who's ordering it, especially knowing that we are ordering from, you know, a, a lot of the vendors that we order from are white-owned businesses. We know that for a fact. And I can't say that they would necessarily be happy with the sayings that we have on our candles. I, I can't say either way, but, you know, I can make a guess. But... <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, we just had to do a lot of research trying to find our sourcing. Yeah. You had touched on how it came out of a, a necessity because you have allergies. So could you explain to the audience how candles is helping you with your allergies? So our candles, um, they are hand poured. We use soy, soy wax and high end fragrance oils. And the benefits of a soy wax candle over 
wax candles that you buy at a host yeah paraffin wax that you'll buy at a grocery market or something like that um they have more toxins whereas soy wax it's a clean burn you're not burning off what they call them phthalates it's a, it's a toxin that they don't encourage you to breathe in um so soy wax is just um something clean that it doesn't add to your allergies you know it's something that kind of aids in having a better environment um, so that you're not breathing in anything that may trigger your, your sinuses, sneezing, runny nose, things like that. So a lot of people, you know, also practice aromatherapy, um, which is the use of essential oils um, and things of that nature for, for natural healing and holistic healing. Um, although we're not entirely in a aroma in, aer in aromatherapy, um, we still have a big belief in, you know, practicing good health. So I think soy wax aids to that, enjoying your candle so you don't have to worry about breathing things in, you know, so. so also, soy waxes, our candles are skin safe as well, just because there's nothing, there's no added chemicals. We don't use it as a skin product, but you can get it on your skin and you won't be irritated by the candle itself. And that's the thing that we love about the soy wax versus, say, a paraffin wax. I mean, there's a lot of mysterious things in there, and we know that ours are just 100% wax made from American-grown soybeans. I heard you talk about earlier that y'all had offered candle-making classes which sounds awesome. Uh, sounds like an awesome a date night, uh, too. So <laughs> for anybody that is, like, um, watching, I'm pretty sure they were like, oh, when is that going to be coming back around? Because I am in the house bored, bored in the house all day now. You know, um, I had also recently interviewed a company in ATL called the Just Add Honey Tea Company, where they are a black-owned tea company, and they do what's called a par tea, where they get on Zoom with everybody else, and they um, learn how to make um, intricate teas and have a good tea party. So it sounds like that is an opportunity for y'all, too, in terms of candle making. Um, have y'all done any uh, pivots on um, a COVID in terms of like getting over the hump with um, a downturn in like sales? Um, I was going to say we did pivot whenever COVID happened. Um, we haven't done anything with the candle making class yet. We're still figuring out the logistics of that because we would essentially have to mail a huge packet of supplies to everyone. A lot of things that you need to make a candle are not things that people typically just have in their home. Um, so we're still playing with the logistics of that. But prior to COVID, we were doing maybe four or five markets a month. We were doing a lot of shows, a lot of pop-ups, and, uh, and then we pivoted 100% to online. Luckily for us, when 2020 started, before we knew what COVID was, we had already planned on pivoting towards online. And so I think just by chance, we were already making that shift. We were preparing to do less markets throughout the year and then focus more online. Um, so the main difference has been our email marketing. We've increased our email marketing since COVID has happened and staying connected with people. But that's also, we were able to do that because we've been collecting emails for three years now. So we've had that relationship with our customers. We collect emails every second we get. So it's not like we lost contact with all these people when we were no longer doing markets, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I'll, I just want to add, um, we, don't think we've, you know, increased our engagement any more or less since COVID has happened, but, you know, we still want to be innovative and try to adjust because we feel like online shopping and more online based things are going to be the new normal. So I, I would say with our candles, um, one in one area that we have, you know, tried to explore ways we can interact even better is we've added a playlist to our candle. So yeah, we have a QR code on the back of the candle and that'll send you to our SoundCloud um, link where we have a, a curated playlist where you can listen while you're burning the candle. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of opportunity we feel to, you know, pivot more and we're, we're still exploring, but it, we're excited about it, you know, so. I think this is a great testament to how you were able to pivot when things got hard and, and 
embraced the 20th century of using tech, you know? So overall, hats off and complete dis disclosure. We had talked off camera that I work for MailChimp. So it's pretty cool to hear that y'all were using our platform to still talk to the customers and like get the engagement going. So hats off to y'all all the way. Um, with that being said, I just want to ask, do y'all have anything else that y'all like to tell our audience? I would say just continue to be on the lookout for us. We have more candles. Uh, we, we're working on a new collection um, that we're planning to release soon. Uh, we do want to continue our candle making classes because we miss interacting with people in that way and, and just you know, being with the people again. Um, you can find us on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook at Lonez Sense. And uh, we hope you all are staying safe. And <laughs> that's it. Well, uh, thanks again. And I wish y'all the best of uh, luck on everything that y'all are um, doing right now. So. So I am here with a great story to be told right now that I had to travel all the way to the city of Houston just to do it justice. So I'm sitting here right now with a man that has a story to tell. Name is John, but they call him Joe Black. So I'm gonna let the man introduce who he is and where we are at at this time. Okay, hi, my name is John, better known as Joe Black. And uh, we're here in uh, Joe Black Barbershop in Pearland, Texas, about 6516 Broadway Street, Street 140. Uh, we're here at our back to school giveaway drive through this year. Uh, we normally do a backpack giveaway and we have a lot of events and activities outside, but due to COVID-19, we didn't let that stop us because we already know how difficult it is for parents and uh, families at this time. So we still decided to go back and give today and this time we did a drive through so uh, no one has to get out their vehicles. We still have our backpacks uh, stuffed with school supplies. We also inserted uh, two face masks and uh, hand sanitizers inside of the backpacks as well. So we're trying to stay as safe as possible and just keep it going and let the community know that we're here for them and we're not just in the community, but we are a part of the community. So I don't think you had a touchdown. What makes this day special? So don't they have a name in the city for this day? Yes, uh, actually September 6th, which is today, is Joe Black Barbershop Day in, in the city of Houston. And uh, I was acknowledged for my community services. I'm originally from New Orleans uh, due to Hurricane Katrina. We came here in the 2005 and um, we didn't have anything. And uh, we came here with, with nothing in the city of Houston. They opened their arms to me and my family. And uh, I always say it, the, the, the heart warm uh, that I felt and the sincerity that I, I felt from the city, I said, when I get on my feet, I have to do something to give back to the city, knowing that what they did for my family. So what I did was I decided to give back to the kids and because uh, the kids are our future. So I decided to give back uh, backpacks and stuff with school supplies. And it started off small. We did uh, 50 the first time. And uh, I didn't know how it was gonna turn out. It was just my way of giving back to the city. You're trying to help out. And yeah, and um, the, the, the reaction uh, on a kid's face and, and the parents, they were so grateful. And that really touched my heart. So I was like, I can't stop. So I continued on doing it. And now this is my, uh, what, 12th year. Wow. Uh, doing the uh, back to school giveaway. 12th year. Uh, 12th year. So, as you mentioned earlier, your name is John, mm -hmm. but they call you Joe Black. Mm -hmm. Where does the name Joe Black come from? Okay, Joe Black came from, first of all, they started calling me Black. 
but you already know why. Like, <laughs> but, and then they started calling me Joe all of a sudden. Now all my clients, they, they know my name, John. So they started calling me Joe all of a sudden, you know, cause they trying to give you nicknames in, yeah. in, in the hood and the project stuff. So like, why y'all calling me Joe? Y'all know my name ain't no Joe. Mm -hmm. Like we're gonna call you that anyway. <laughs> you know, so, you know, we like to shorten up things. We say Earl instead of oil. We don't want to say oil. <laughs> oil is too too hard. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We say Earl, you know, yeah. so it's like, you know, sandwich, you know, things yeah. like that. So we don't pronounce the whole thing. So, yeah. and I was like, okay, y'all call me Joe. All right, cool. So they started calling me Joe Black. They put us together. And um, when I used to cut their hair, you know, I really made them feel good. So it was like, man, I got me a Joe Black. I ain't got no haircut. I got a Joe Black. So that's what the name Joe Black and how my services came out. So that's why, you know, none of my services is haircuts. They're all Joe Black. Love that. So it's a, uh, I, I stuck with that. And, and it's funny because when I first was trying to open up my barbershop, I had about five different names that I was going to come up with on um, the name of my barbershop. So I called a couple of my clients back in New Orleans and I said, oh man, uh, I'm about to open up the barbershop. I'm trying to, I'm trying to come up with a name. I, I got this name. I got that name. I'm like, uh, I'm trying to do like ball cuts with styles and all that and, uh, elegance. And it's like, man, nah, you tripping. It's Joe Black, period. <laughs> so I was like, all right, cool. Say no more. Joe Black. You know, that's it. Joe Black. Everybody know you as Joe Black. So you got to name your barbershop Joe Black. Nothing else. Got you. And, and, and I'm also impressed that you only carry a, a black hair care products mm -hmm. and to um, a cell. Mm -hmm. So could you just explain how you were able to carry only a black hair care product? Well, uh, what I what I try to do is I, I look for products because uh, I, I found out, I try to do my own products mm -hmm. and I found out that when you do your own products, uh, shelf life and all that plays a factor. So sometimes you be in too deep and you have a whole lot of product that you really can't get rid of. So uh, I met a guy in uh, in Connecticut when we went to a Connecticut uh, Barber Expo and um, he had uh, some some uh, organic hair products and it was a black guy. So I said, um, you know, let me let me give him a try. And what really made me say I'm gonna go with this guy because this guy gave me every single product he had for free. For free? Wow. And he told me to try it out. I was like, even if I don't like it, just that gesture makes me want to support you. And then when I liked it, it was amazing. So I see why he baited me in because when you know your product, it's your product, right. you know. So it and it was it's awesome. And um, I kind of like to do that to, to to support each other. Yeah. To support to pull out our uh, support our own and, and just kind of make sure that that we all in the circle together. We're all in this together. Yeah. You know. His products make my services go around. My services make his products go around. Love so it. we're all in it together. So just to ask one last question, if you could give anybody who is watching some words of hope or some advice mm -hmm. who's trying to get to the point where they feel comfortable in their own entrepreneurship journey, mm -hmm. what advice would that be? Have passion, uh, pray about it, if your intuition, your gut feeling tells you to do something or tell you don't do it, follow that. Follow that. Because that's where my mistakes came in. My gut told me something, don't do it, and I did it anyway just because, and it wind up not happening. So follow your gut, your, your conscience, that's God talking to you. Follow that footstep, because I promise you, if you do, you don't have no worry in the world. Walk by faith and work, and I promise you, it's gonna be there. Right, thanks a lot for your time, man. Everybody at home, please come and check out Joe Black Barbershop. Alright, so I'm here with the infamous Amigos, owner of the Midas Group. I've heard a great ton of great things all about you and everything that you have going on from um the houston trend magazine but i want you to introduce yourself and what it is that you do to the audience at home uh my name is mikos adams uh born and raised in houston texas um right here man hometown boy graduated from university of houston um and yeah man i mean it's been a journey to say the least um 
I graduated with a supply chain degree, business, right? So uh, went into oil and gas immediately after that. And I felt like my, my whole career was going to be that, right? I was gonna be like one of the youngest black VPs of you know one of these oil and gas companies. And um, you know, when I started doing research on <laughs> the way that those uh, leadership boards look, yeah, they, they don't look like us. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, after after about three years or so, you know, I started thinking about transitioning into entrepreneurship. Um, you know, I then connected with Dave, and you know, he started mentoring me. And you know, I never forget he mentioned. He said, "Hey, I'm going to get you out of corporate America. I'm going to make you an entrepreneur." And you know, I was like, "Ah, oh, you know, it sounds good. You know, it sounds good." But um, but I decided to start taking it seriously, and then. You know, before you know it, I was kind of forced into it, right? So my, my entire um, organization or my facility that I was at shut down. Oh, wow. Yeah, so everybody was laid off and, you know, I was able to see folks who had been there for 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. right? And, and bet so big on being able to retire from this place, right? Not know what to do. You know, their friends were there. You know, their family members worked there and, you know, they had to make uprooted decisions that scared them, you know what I mean? And for me being as young as I was, I was like, man, I never want to be in that position, right? So I ended up going all in on myself um, and decided to get into the marketing industry. So I'm like, all right, let's figure it out. Let's, let's, yeah, it's, it's a drastic change, you know? And so, you know, I'm applying to all of these firms and different organizations and companies, but nobody would give me a shot right? Because I have no marketing background. <laughs> um, they're like, what is this uh, process improvement engineer doing? You know, he got a Six Sigma black belt trying to be a marketer. Um, but, but yeah, so I, I just believe, man, I went down to the end of my savings, just trying, you know what I mean? Um, and lo and behold, man, Dave connected me with some people that he knew that were in the industry and got opportunity with, uh, with Combs Enterprises. So I, I ended up managing all of you know, Sean Diddy Combs portfolio here. Yeah, so I managed to rock, Bad Boy Entertainment, um, Deli on Tequila, like Sean John, I've done some Sean John campaigns. So that experience changed my entire perspective, right? You know, there's not too many people in Houston that could say they've done that. The only other person, you know, I know like two other people who have done it, right? One of them is Dave, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, so man, to be able to take that opportunity and just create my entire uh, view on what's next. You know, I jumped into full-time entrepreneurship after that, you know, with the Midas group, partnered with my with my mentor. I mean, I'm sorry, with my business partner, Tay Mitch. And, you know, we just saw the same vision of, you know, wanting to create a different lifestyle and a different trajectory from what we're used to and show people that, hey, you can be a creative. Hey, you can go out there and bet on yourself and you don't have to move to LA, right? You don't have to move to New York in order yeah, you can do it right at home, you know, and, and, and create a, a, or plant a seed that, you know, you'll see the fruits of your labor later on and everybody will finally catch on. So it sounds like you are a man of uh, many talents, but the one thing that we were talking about off camera has been a trading. So how has that switch been from doing just strictly marketing after you got out of oil and gas to now try and do a trading? Because I'm often asked like, man, like it seems like you gotta be often pretty intelligent or it seems like you gotta have like a whole bunch of cash. And I'm like, it's not that hard. It just takes time, you know? So how has that switch been for you and how has that impacted you and those that you're trying to help? Man, that's a great question. Um, so the way it's impacted me personally you know, one of my cousins, um, he's a huge multifamily real estate investor. I call him a mogul, right? Because, you know, we don't meet too many young, black, successful, you know, multifamily. You're talking about $10 million projects and up. Like, so, you know, connecting with him and him just having that, that mindset and idea of like, yo, I want to put my people in position. You know, so everybody around him, he's helping invest in. And, you know, he's somewhat become like a, a VC, right? But, um but yeah, he's never been able to help us in a, in a way that, um, you know, he can't share his 20, 15, 20 years of, of real estate knowledge to help us get into that industry, right? But, but he recently jumped into the trading world, the day trading world, and, you know, for him, you know, he showed us profits over dinner of like, 
you know, two ta- two thousand dollars while we're sitting at dinner. You know what I mean? And I'm like, yo, like, I've got to figure this out. Right. However, um, so he introduced us to the game, and you know, we started learning more and more about it, and like we realized that, hey, this is an opportunity, right, to impact those that have no clue of how to make their money work for them. You know, the the type of conversations that we're having even with family members is like, hey, you don't have to work as hard as you are to make the type of money that you're making, right? You're talking about people with salaries of like, you know, three, four thousand dollars a month salary. Like, hey, you can do that in the market. In a day, you know what I mean? Like, and, and have the freedom of, you know, pursuing your passion and like, yeah, like it is possible for you to still have dreams, you know, because we get caught up in this lifestyle of like repetition and like y- your dreams quickly start to diminish and you feel like, man, like life is hard and it is hard. But, you know, if you seek out the information, like you can, you, the world is yours, you know, you can write your own ticket. But, um, but yeah, so for me, man, now my, my purpose, I feel is built around, yes, marketing, but how do I put others in position, right, to do what they want to do, whether it is a, a small business owner or whether it is a creative that wants to leverage their own capital, whatever they've built, right, to make their money work for them. And it's easier than you think. You know, I have no investing background. I, <laughs> I'm terrible with numbers, you know, but I can definitely read the indicators all day long. And you want to tell me I could check one, two, three, four? <laughs> make a decision like hey like it's it's a no-brainer but uh but yeah so it's definitely shifted my perspective drastically what would you think would be the most uh, d- difficult thing that you see entrepreneurs try to do when they're like i'm gonna quit my job i'm just gonna go out on a, a faith and you are just watching them crash and burn and you're like hey we should talk because you're doing a lot of stuff that i did uh, wrong so Oh, what are those things that you see entrepreneurs do wrong every day that you just like, hey, if you just follow these tips, you can have a, a better outcome? Uh, what I see most young entrepreneurs do is not ask for help. <laughs> like, you know, because, I, you know, I was having a conversation earlier, right, with a friend and I was just like, hey, um, what do you think it is that makes, you know, young entrepreneurs struggle? And we started talking about how, you know, for the most part, entrepreneurs, when you're jumping out there and taking that leap of faith, you've been a leader in your life in some other lane, right? In in some other profession or some other organization or whatever it is to be able to say, hey, I'm going to be an entrepreneur and, and create my own. You have to have been a leader somewhere else, right? So in order to really jump into this new world, you're, you're a baby, right? You're, you're, you're a novice. You have no experience in entrepreneurship at all. So you have to find some humility, right? You have to f- humble yourself and say, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. Can I get help? You know, can I, like, what do I need to do? And not only that, um, realizing that, hey, I can't do it all. I need a team. I need subject matter experts in areas that I can't fulfill. And just being okay with like, hey, I'm going to have to pay for that, right? And if I can't pay for it, I have to add value somehow, somewhere else, right? Whether that's, you know, hey, like, you know, when we're up, you know, you will be taken care of for sure. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing is asking for help and understanding that you can't do it all, you know, because a lot of, I mean, I did it myself. Like I tried because you want to cut costs, right? But what, what the, the biggest lesson I've learned over the last two years was like, hey, pay for talent, right? Because at that point, you have the resources and the tools that you need so that you can grow the business. Exactly. <laughs> but, but yeah, you, you know. Right. <laughs> we know, we know, right? So what would you think sets you apart and your brand apart from all the other entrepreneurs within the city of Houston? Uh, so for me, I feel like what sets me apart from everybody else in Houston as far as entrepreneurs are concerned is um, I make sure that I keep that uh, that common touch, right? So I, I don't want to be so high and mighty that I'm not accessible, 
I want people to still be able to reach out. I want to be able to support those who have events coming up or I want to be able to give my advice and my two cents if I can, you know what I mean? Especially through like DMs or social media, like for sure. If someone reaches out to me, I'm, I'm not going to say, hey, no, I charge for this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, you know, I, um, I saw something the other day from um, David Shans, uh, you know, sleep is for suckers. Oh, yeah. You already know, uh, but but he, he had a post about, you know, hey, like, it was an old client of his, and he's like, you know, I need your help. And he's like, well, you're not paying for me anymore, but I'll be at, you know, I'll be at the mall, I'll be at the kiosk from this time to this time, and you could come ask me whatever questions you have because it's not taking my time. I'm already there. You can ask me whatever I, whatever I can help you with, sure. You know, and I have that same mi mindset of like, hey, I'm always willing to help for sure, regardless of whether you're paying me or not. Um, and I think that's what's going to change or it is already changing. Right. My brand for the city of Houston is like, yo, like this guy is actually approachable. Not only that, he's humble and coachable. So, you know, I, that's one thing that I always uh, remind myself to be as well. It's like, yo, like no matter how big you get, you have to have mentors, you have to have people to look up to and ask for advice from regardless, right? So maintaining that that blueprint, I think, has set me apart. So you mentioned the word uh, humbleness, but I'm often seeing that word uh, bastardized because people take the word humbleness and try to twist it into you really shouldn't be posting all your wins all the time because that's not humble, as they claim. They also claim things like if you buy a, a nice car, you're not humble now. How would you define a humbleness, and how have you seen that word used against us? Man, I think that uh, the word humble uh, stands for you know um, it's not about it's not about dimming your light, right? I think that I think it's the complete opposite, right? And and showing people that hey, this is possible, right? You don't see too many. Um, entrepreneurs that are that are praised and, and looked up to right by the youth so for me even with the marketing firm right or the investing firm that we've created like this is an opportunity to show kids right little little black boys and girls that hey the we can look up to investors we can look up to entrepreneurs we can look up to creatives like we don't have to look up to ball players and rappers and you know, athletes, I mean, like, come on now, like you can, like there's a wealth of <laughs> greatness all into our community, but like, we have to show that, we have to display it, we can't dim our light, you know? So that's my view on being humble, like, sure you can't boast and brag as if you're untouchable, but to, to show your accolades and show your wins and like, I think that's so important, that's, that's key, right? So that someone can be motivated and inspired to do the same thing, like it's possible, right? So, so we're gonna close with just asking, what's the best way for people to reach out to you, and what do you have planned for the city of Houston coming up? Because it seems like you got your hands in everything. So, how can they easily be in in influenced about you? Follow me on the gram, you know, follow me on all social media platforms at I am Mikos, I-A-M-M-I-K-O-S. And, uh, and yeah, connect with me, you know, DM me, feel free to reach out, join my email list. You know, I have a hustle to the top email program. Um, it's a community, you know, where I give tips on marketing and investing and, you know, all of that stuff. So, you know, text uh, more, more sales to 77948, you know, and you'll be on my text list as well to, Stay up to date with everything we got going on. All right, my man. Well, this concludes our time here, but thanks a lot, my man.